So hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, so we're having our Clink 101 and today we're going to focus on permissions. And we did have like a seminar on members and permissions, but this one's going to go into a bit more detail and go through like the tools in Clint and how um, how you can use permissions within those. And yes, Emily, it will be recorded as well. <laughs> so yeah, we're just today you've got myself and my colleague Sarah. Uh, who will be talking you through. And then we've also got Olivia as well on our webinar today. So for our agenda, we're just gonna look at what permissions are and show you like a use case story example and who can set these up and manage these within Clint and then where permissions are used and where you can relocate them. And then we're gonna go into the Clint environment and show you some live examples. And then, yeah, we'll have our Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, We'll be happy to answer your questions at the end. Um, you can either like type them in or yeah, ask them directly as well. So firstly, we're just going to look at what permissions are. So these are designed and clicked to add a layer of security to all your content. And the first view we're going to show you is a file view of permissions. So once you've clicked into the file um, permission tab, it will come up like this. Um, and you can yeah, either set it so it's just group members and control their permissions. So you'll have like view or edit and view and things like that. Or the second option, if you just want one person to be able to see it um, in the second image that will come up, you can select nobody and then select the particular person you want to be able to see the file. Um, so here we've got Evelyn and then we've just chosen, I think by default it comes up with view, edit and delete. But yeah, if say you just wanted her to view it, you would be able to select that here as well. And yeah, in the add members group, that list will come up and that would just be group members in that list as well. So now we're just gonna look at the user story example. Um, so yeah, we've got Buddock's clients. So you can see Amanda here and she is basically responsible. She's the super admin of Clint. So she will be responsible for like setting up the general groups and accounts. And once she set up her groups, then she'll hand it over to Sam who is our C, uh, group admin. And as a group admin, Sam will be able to set permissions um, to any piece of contact, content that he has access to. So yeah, he'll have, be able to set permissions really easily as an admin. And then we're just gonna take a look at our clients. So we've got Francisco and he is a content contributor in Clint. And um, so he will also be able to set permissions um, but Evelyn is just set up as a, what we call like a read-only member. So she won't be able to set permissions. And the reason she won't be able to set permissions is because she can't create content. So you will need to be able to create content in, to be able to edit permissions. So we're just now gonna look at, yeah, so that's explained who can set and manage them. And yeah, you can see the, the types that they are within Clint just come up now. So now we're just going to look at where you can find permissions because it's not actually, you can, it's not restricted to files. It also covers like notes and things like that. So we're just going to have a look at that now. Um, so firstly, yeah, this is like the group homepage. So that's where you can find files. And then once you've, say you just wanted Evelyn to see that folder called client folder, the way you would do that is you would go um, to the padlock icon where the arrow is. Um, and then you would click on that and then that would take you to the view that we just saw a minute ago and then you would be able to set Evelyn to be the only person so you wanted her to view it and that was it you could set that up there and now we're just going to go into notes and um, so notes can sort of be used to do like data visualizations or some of you use um, jot form um, that's the type of note as well. And you are able to set permissions on notes as well. So here we've just got an example of a RSPV like invite. Um, so if say you only wanted one client to be able to fill this out or view it, um, you could do that on the permissions. So you, where the arrow is, so it's slightly different view to the um, files. It's like you actually click into the note and then you can find it here at the bottom of the tab. Um, so you can share that with group members by clicking that group members option there and restrict their, their permissions. Or if you just wanted one client to see it, you would select nobody 
and then select the person that you'd want to see and yeah you would have the option to set them up to be a view or view and edit or admin etc and yeah we're just going to look at events now and so yeah, events work in quite a similar way to notes you'll find it at the bottom here and you can see the arrow there and then yeah you'll have the two options so you can either share the event with all group members by doing selecting that all group members um, option or if you just wanted the at attendees only to be able to see this event then you would just select the invitees option um, so for instance like francisco is the only attendee of this um, invite so if you only wanted it to be him you would just select the invitees only and he will also be able to locate this event in his main dashboard it will come up under his events it will come up there as long as he um, belongs to more than one group um, so that's another place where you can view events if you wanted somewhere else to view it it should come up in your main dashboard and then we're just going to go and look into tasks so Yes, um, you can also restrict permissions on tasks to say it was something you're working on with a client, but you only wanted them to be able to see that. And um, that's something you can also restrict. And um, yeah, you'll, if you click into the task, it will come up like this. And then you can find permissions at the bottom of the right. And you can, again, say you want all your group members to be able to view this task. You can select that there, or you can select the signee option and it will only be Evelyn and Francisco that will be able to view that task. And now, yeah, we're just gonna, Sarah's gonna take you into Clink to show you a few things on the permission side of things. Great, thanks, Hannah. Um, I know there was a question from, from the attendees just asking in regards to whether or not this video was going to be recorded and distributed. Yeah, you could probably see on the screen that it is being recorded at the moment uh, and we will distribute it afterwards. Um, generally, we do the distribution via client newsletters. Uh, so if you see something that's come across from Clinked, uh, you'll be able to actually access it there. Also, um, all of our webinars are always posted on our Clinked YouTube channel as well. So you can just go to YouTube and type in Clinked and you will find us there and you'll find all of our past webinars, including this one, which we'll post uh, likely tomorrow as well. Uh, we always do a little bit of scrubbing on it too, just to make sure that it's very clean for all of you. Uh, so with that, we're gonna go into the deep dive. So what we're gonna do is actually log into Clinked and we are going to actually view what it is that Hannah was talking about. And we'll be doing it from the use case of, um, that client we were just talking about, so Willow Bend Investments. So Willow Bend Investments is a client of Budex. Budex could be the same as a lot of you. Um, you are the um, account admins of Clinked. It is your account that you're working in. It's been branded for your name. Um, and so your logo would be in that top left corner. And if you're working with various clients, um, the example would be how you would work with um, Willow Bend Investments and how you would set up permissions. So hopefully that makes sense for everybody. Uh, what I'm gonna do right now, I'm just gonna stop sharing and I'm just going to navigate over to, um, to Clinked. So bear with me for just a moment as I get that up. All right. Share that. There we go. All right, so as I mentioned, we're logging into Budex, uh, Budex's account. So I'm just going to type in the information for Francisco's login. Uh, so as we mentioned before, Francisco is um, the client of Budex. Francisco has been set up, as Hannah mentioned before, as a content contributor. So what that means is that Francisco has asked his, um, the group he works with, Budex, if he could have additional administrative rights into the group itself. So that means he can actually contribute content. He can actually add any piece of content that we talked about before to the groups that he's part of. In this case, he's, he's part of two groups with Budex. And so in this case, we're going to actually talk about Willow Bend Investments, which is actually Francisco's, the company that he works, he works for. So as Hannah mentioned beforehand, the dashboard is always a view where you're able to actually see your individual content. If you're part of multiple groups, same thing with your members. If they're part of multiple groups, they're going to be able to see that dashboard. If they're not, um, and they will not be able to see that dashboard view. So what we're going to do, we're going to walk through um, just a bit of the use case about how a content contributor can actually set permissions. Um, this would be similar to a group administrator as well, how a group administrator could set permissions. Both of those two member types are able to set permissions within, side, within Clinked. And so with that, um, we're also, what we're also going to do is actually show you as well how Evelyn, 
who is a read only group member or what we call group member um, will be able to, to see that information and then also how she'll be able to interact with the information based upon the permissions that are set. So we're just going to navigate directly into files. You'll notice within here, just as Hannah had mentioned beforehand, because he is set up as a content contributor, he is able to actually see the padlock on all of these. So that means he actually has the rights to be able to access permissions. Now, he has actually made it up so that, or he's, he's set up fund admin, this particular folder as something that only Evelyn can see because Evelyn is actually the owner of, um, from a read-only perspective, she's the owner of the fund admin tool. So before I go into that, I'm just gonna show you what a permission setup for all the other folders would, would look like when it is actually accessible for all group members. So similar to what Hannah was talking about before, what the team has done, and this is um, both Sam, who's the group admin, and Francisco as the content contributor at the client level. And mind you, you do not have to have contri content contributors at your client level. Everyone could be set up as a read-only member if you would like to, and then your team or yourself would be the ones doing the actual permission setting as group admins. One of the things that they've decided to do here is they've decided that all of their members will only be able to view fo um, files that are within the folder of client folder. They've also set up the same permission for all of these other folders as well. And we'll see the impact of that actually when we go into Evelyn's account. Now I do know this, uh, this group member PNG was one that needed to be changed. Oh, actually it's not, it is just fine. We already changed it. So must've been Sam who updated that one. Um, so in this case, now let's go back to see what the fund admin tool was, or folder was set up as to be able to give only Evelyn access rate. So in this case, the group members are not checked off. So what we've done is we've said, we don't wanna share it with anybody. And then we've individually selected Evelyn. The way that we did that was just by going add from the list. These are all the people who are part of this group who could actually be chosen in this. So in this case, we've chosen Evelyn. And then we've actually said, you know what, everyone has access or normally she would have access just to view, but we actually want her to be able to add folder or add files, add folders, delete where needed. So in this case, we've actually chosen that she is going to view, edit, and delete. And then I'm just gonna say update. What does that mean? It means that she'll have these two buttons as something that she can use in that folder, but not in any of the others. And we'll show that to you in a minute when we get into, um, when we get into the Evelyn's account and show you what that means. Now in uh, notes, all of these notes have actually been set up so that they um, have different permissions on it. So we'll just say, for example, this is the welcome note that you saw on the home page. In this case, the permission has actually been set up so that all group members can view. However, if I did want to say give Evelyn rights to be able to actually access this but, and do it in addition to viewing, what I could do is I could actually add a group member. I could say for Evelyn that she is added. And then on that, I could also change that I want her, I don't want her to be able to delete, but I do want her to be able to edit it. Now, I'm not going to keep that because I've actually decided that that's not what I want Evelyn to do. Instead, I want Evelyn to be able to, I want to have a note between her and me, and I just want to be able to go back and forth on this note. So I'm going to say, and me, by meaning Francisco. Um, we're just going to put it as that. We're going to say it's only being shared. It's being shared with nobody. And that's just to start it off. So let's discuss the quarterly meeting here. There we go, I'm gonna save that. Once I've created the note, this is where I get to set the permissions. So now you come here to permissions. I'm saying it's being shared with nobody, which is how we originally set it up. And I'm just gonna say add a group member and I'm gonna add Evelyn. And I'm gonna make it so that Evelyn can actually view and edit but cannot delete. And I'm just gonna update that. So within this one, just so you know, uh, Francisco is able, a content contributor. So if he hits edit, he's able to actually um, add content. So change this around. He's also able to do a few other things like add attachments and things of that nature. Um, so we're just gonna leave that for now. We'll navigate back to, to this when we get into the Evelyn side. On the group event side of things, so this is the calendar. 
um, this is Francisco's calendar, so it's based upon the tasks that he's involved with, and these are the things that you're seeing in orange, or the events that he's been invited to, and that's what you're seeing in blue. Now, he has one event um, that we know he's been invited to, and that's this quarterly client call. If we were to click into it, we can see that Francisco's been invited, and he's accepted, and then also Sam has been invited, but Evelyn has not been. So therefore, we would expect that when we go into, um, when we go into Evelyn's account unless this is actually open for all group members she won't be able to see it and in this case that is indeed how this has been set up so the only people who should be able to view this are Francisco as well as Sam in their own accounts so that's how this is set up we'll look to see when we get into Evelyn's if we can actually see that event so every everyone remember that's on the 15th of July similarly within tasks Francisco has the full board of tasks. So these are all tasks that are going on across this group. He, ha he and Sam have been inviting different people into the group. And what, he's, what they've decided to do just as best practice is to also use permissions here. So there have been permissions applied to investor reports and permissions applied to board members. Now again, you don't have to do this. You can make it so that everybody sees all of the tasks. Um, and by default, that is always going to be the case. If you want to change it, though, that's where that's where we would go through the process of, of changing it. Um, so within that, um, let's go into the permissions area. So we'll go into permissions here, and you can see that best practice. They've decided anyone who's been assigned it is able to see, not all group members. Same thing with board members. Again, they've decided their practice, the way that they want to do it, is that only the assignees, when they log in, are able to see their own things. So that is how Francisco sees the board. That is how Francisco has set it up along with Sam. So let's see what that is actually like for Evelyn. So I'm just going to log out. I'm going to put in Evelyn's login email address and sign in. And you notice here on the top right corner, I'm now signed in as Evelyn. Evelyn is part of two different groups the same as Francisco, so Fund One as well as Willow Bend Investments. Now if I click into Willow Bend Investments, we'll be able to see the board similar to um, Francisco. The only thing you'll notice is up here in the top right corner, um, she's not able to see settings and she's also not able to see that option of edit widgets. Um, so that's a bit of a difference between a read-only member on the home screen and a content contributor, which Francisco was. So let's go through, we're gonna go through each of the different feature areas that we just talked about. First one being files. And now you can see here, client folder down. There's no padlocks here. So meaning she doesn't have rights to permissions. However, you can see that there's a share button that's here and there's also a couple other tools. What this indicates is that she has access to this file uh, or this folder and she has some permissions that have been applied to it. And these other ones she doesn't. She's able to, to see what's in here, but she's not able to do much more unless she's actually added the document. In the past she had had access to this folder, so that's the reason why she was able to, to have ownership. So anytime someone's added content into, um, into Clinked um, based upon permissions, they will still have ownership unless you've taken that away. Um, in this case though, let's just say the Francisco one, this one is set up so that she has no access to it. If we navigate back to that folder that we had set up where only she can see it, that's the fund administrative one. If you notice here on the top right, there's nothing here in terms of like creating new folders or adding files. However, if we navigate into the folder that she's been created or she's been permissioned to have access to edit, to view, or to view, to edit, and to delete, you can see that she actually now does have this functionality that you had seen with Francisco with the content contributing. So in this case, if she needed to be able to update a file or create a new folder, she could. So let's just call it test. I'm gonna share it with nobody else, it's just for me. And now it's in here and it's been created by Evelyn. In addition, if she wanted to upload a file, she could. So she could do it from, um, from her desktop, and depending upon what you have access to, she could also potentially upload a folder. She could request files from people, or she could attach to a Google Drive. That's all dependent upon what you've set up as an account administrator. Those are things that you can shut off in your account settings. So within that, that's how she would be able to, this is the permissions that she would be able to do in the folder that she's been given those permission rights of view, edit, and delete. 
Now let's go to notes. Recall that um, Francisco had set up a conversation for the two of them to be able to go back and forth on a few things. Now, if we go back to the welcome to, you will notice in here on the top right corner, she does not have access to the edit, just like we had talked about beforehand. However, if we go into the Evelyn and Francisco conversation, you will see that she does have the option to be able to edit. So she does now have the ability to come in and say, um, thanks, I'll So she will be able to utilize any of the functionalities that are up here. So say she wanted to do an iframe like a job form, say that's what they were actually working on together. She would be able to embed the job form, embed an iframe. She could also embed media. So say this, uh, this webinar itself, which is a YouTube video, she could actually embed that if she wanted to as well. So she has a full functionality of the note itself. She can save it and it will be updated there. And the, the two individuals who are part of this will get updates as to what's going on there. In the event section, if you recall, um, I had said that Evelyn will see her specific events. So those are tasks that she's involved with or tasks that are actually uh, open for all group members to see. So the deadlines, so these are some of those, those um, individual tasks. Or um, she will see the events that she is, has been invited into. One of those events we said happened on, uh, that she hadn't been invited to, happened on the 15th of July. And if you notice, this had actually had a blue invitation beforehand or, or a blue um, event. And in this case, that had only been for Francisco and Sam, but because they did the permissioning, it is not being shown on Evelyn's side of things. Now let's go into tasks. Similarly, this is Evelyn's board. So any of the tasks that have been specifically assigned to her and the permissions have been sent, sent that only the assignees will see their, um, their tasks, this is how this will actually come up. So within the Q2 2020 client reporting, they did actually do a best practice in this, which was when someone logs in, they will only see what is theirs if they are a read-only group member. So in this case, Evelyn only sees what she is part of. Same thing with um, the team member side of things. Um, Francisco is not part of the group here, so but Evelyn is. Um, so she's able to see this as well based upon permissions. This director's lunch has actually been set up where the permission is for everyone to be able to see. So if she wants to do anything on here, she can. Um, so she can come into the investor report and you can see she has access to be able to edit. However, if we went into say director lunch, she does not have the access to be able to edit, but she can see the content that's there as well. So with that, um, that is everything that we wanted to cover so that you have an overview as to where you can apply permissions uh, within the content sections of a clinked group. Um, and with that, we are, we'll, we'll open up to Q&As. I am not going to navigate back into the Google or into the uh, PowerPoint presentation just yet, just in case there are any questions specific within a clinked environment. Um, so with that, um, you can unmute yourself uh, to be able to, to make your comments uh, or ask your questions, or you can add your comments into the chat as well. We can, we can see that as well. So with that, does anyone have any questions around permissioning? It can take a little bit of time to type it too. So we'll uh, <laughs> give it a little bit of time there too. And if you don't have questions right now, that is completely okay. Um, while people may be typing or thinking about questions to, to ask, one of the things that we, we try to flag up when we are doing um, these webinars are ways that you can um, continue to learn on your own um, and what resources we have available. So a couple of those resources are actually um, inside Clinked itself. So if you were to navigate to your personal profile, uh, there's a couple things that you can do here. Um, there are two features in here. So there's the help section and there's also feature request. Now, uh, both of these, if you don't happen to see them on your account, um, it's because on the account setting side of things, uh, someone might have disabled the help 
section. Um, it is something that people choose to do sometimes if they want to be fully white labeled and not know that Clinked is behind your, your client, plat, client portal. Totally understand that, but if you want to explore it, just ask your account admin uh, to turn it on. All they have to do is go into accounts, branding, and then go into the, I think it's other, other features or um, other customizations, that's what it is. So help, if you were to click into the help section, this actually does take you into our help center. So today we talked quite a bit about members and different member types. Um, in the Clink Tour, if you go to overview of members, this is where you will actually see descriptions of those different names that we've talked about. In addition to that, we do have for group member specific, you have the ability to be able to look at the different member types that are there in a group specifically, just to be able to illustrate it. And you'll see we've got some friendly faces here uh, for you to be able to, to see as well. In addition to it, one of the things that we have here is if you go to the drop down, you'll see this feature request area. Now we at Clinked, you know, the product itself has been live for about 10 years. Um, and part of the reason why the product has turned into what it is, is because of our clients, just like all of you. Um, and what we've done is we've created a public roadmap. So you are able to actually put in your ideas right here in chat. Um, so let's just say I wanted to do something around tasks. Um, tasks to duplicate, let's just say. And this will actually show up any of the other ones that might um, have been entered by other people. Um, so if there's something that's going on, um, you know, around tasks, you can have a look in just to see if we have anything that's maybe currently under review or being planned or potentially being, um, ha has already come, come to the product and you just might not be aware of it. Anytime you fill these out, the only thing that we ask is that you put in a title, check to see if anything else has come up. Um, and in addition, add as much details as you can. And if you can attach any kind of um, wireframing or screenshots or ideas like that, uh, that would be fantastic as well. So um, with that, that's, that's the feature section. Uh, so we'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll stop sharing. We'll go back into the PowerPoint. If you have any questions, um, please unmute yourself and give us a shout and let us know. Um, let me, there we go. All right, we're back into this. So we've been going through the Q&A. It sounds like we've got a bit of a quiet group today, but that's okay. If you have any questions, um, you can always email us at support at clinked.com. Uh, you can ask questions there. Um, we also are doing our webinars on a uh, bi-monthly basis. So I don't actually, it's twice a month. So whatever the term is for that one. Uh, usually at the beginning of the month, we do a 101 and towards the middle or end of the month, we do something a little bit more in depth. Um, keep, a, keep a watch out for newsletters from us or announcements about those and we'll be able to, um, you'll be able to join them just like you did today. Um, so with that, Hannah, um, or actually, Olivia, would you like to sign off for us today? Um, yeah, lovely. Thanks very much for coming, everyone. I really hope it was helpful for you all. Um, as we said, if you need um, to uh, ask any questions, um, please just send us an email to support at clink.com. So thank you very much from us all, and I hope you have a nice day.